You're enjoying the evolution of your desire? Yes, yes. And the contrast that brings that desire into clarity, you adore as well? Remember, we read your vibration. (laughs) In fact, it is not necessary that you ever speak your desire, for your desire is always known. And your known desire, which you are continually amending, it's the nature of the time-space reality in which you are focused, as that continual desire is continually amended, Source continually recognizes and continually answers to perfection. So that every new desire or every addition to an old desire or every new idea, every new preference, no matter how broad, bold, or subtle, is recognized, understood, and answered every single time. And the love with which it is offered is beyond human description or comprehension. It is important that you be somewhere in the vibrational vicinity of your own desire. (laughs) And when you are, evidence of things happening to help you, to satisfy you, to answer your request, come forth. It is important that you know this one thing about the creative process in order for things to go smoothly for you. When you ask, it is always given every single time. But if you keep asking from a place of believing that it has not yet happened, then you hold yourself vibrationally apart from what you are asking for. When you have not enough money and you keep asking for more money, and every time you ask for more money, it reminds you that you don't have enough money, what happens is you keep active within you the vibration of not enough money. And as long as that is the dominant vibration within you, the thing you're asking for cannot come because you are vibrationally different from your own desire. So a way to understand that and work with it and get around it is to understand that there is step one, which is your asking, and you will never stop asking. And there is step two, which is source answering your request. That's not your work, and it happens every time. And step three is the you getting into the receiving mode of what you are asking for. Now, what we see happening with so many of you, with things that you really, really want, things that really matter to you a great deal, you seem to keep beating the subject. You keep it so active within you. You talk about it so often. It's sort of like you think you are four years old and you are asking your mother for something and she's not really hearing you because she's busy in her own world and she seems to you like she is the avenue through which all your good flows. And so you keep pestering her and you learn in time that the more you pester, the more you eventually get her attention, although sometimes it's not attention you really wanted from her. But you come away from those early experiences believing that if you can really speak a plaintive case of lack and pain, that someone will come to your assistance, and your mother often does. But she teaches you poorly because she gives you the impression that if you can keep activated your pain and your lack of what you want, that someone will come to your aid and fill the void. And that defies the law of attraction. Nothing can fill that void because vibrationally you are offering a signal and it is only your signal that can ever be answered. So you've got to find some way of getting off the subject of not enough money if you want more money to come. And the easiest way we've ever seen that is to get in the mode of appreciating the money that is coming or get into the mode of appreciating the lifestyle that you are living or, and this is hard for some to understand because it's so different from what you've been attempting, or you must get off that subject altogether and get on a subject that you are in the allowing mode about. So how do you know whether you're in the allowing mode or in the resisting mode of what you've been asking for? It's easy. The allowing mode feels like fun, feels like joy, feels like love, feels good. The resistant mode feels like tension, feels like hate, feels like anger, feels like frustration. You can tell 
whether you are in the allowing or resistant mode by the way you feel. Now, what is it that you are allowing or resisting? It is the fulfillment of the well-being that you are asking for. It is the fulfillment of the source that is really you. You are extensions of source energy. Here in this physical body, you are leading-edge extensions. And while we speak of the physical human you and the inner being you or the non-physical you, really what we want for you is that you recognize that you are you. And the source that is you is you, just like the you that is you is you, just like the personality that you know is you is you. When you feel exhilarated, you are really letting you be you. When you are feeling love, you are letting you be you. You are full of you. But when you are angry or frustrated or fearful, when you are in that emotional pain, then you are focused upon something that has activated a vibration within you that has you different from you. In other words, you're like the radio that has adjusted your dial just a little bit off signal of what you're really wanting to receive. So when we talk about being in the allowing mode or being in the receiving mode, we're always talking about being in the mode of letting the well-being that is really you, the clarity that is really you, the energy that is really you, the knowing that is really you, the wellness that is really you, the abundance that is really you, be manifested right here, right now, where you are. So this now moment is where all of your power is because now is where... You meet you. Now, we know we're doing it too. We're talking about you meeting you, which sounds like two yous meeting. And what we're really wanting you to feel is the combination of you expressing in this time-space reality. So how can you tell what you're doing in this important juncture where the source that is you meets the idea that you are focusing upon in this moment? In your moment of love or in your moment of joy, you are using this now moment in a very powerful way. Because in this now moment, you are choosing a thought which activates a vibration within you that causes no resistance, so you are fully allowing you to flow. And under those conditions, you thrive. Under those conditions, you line up with circumstances and events that help you to accommodate a comfortable, joyful, provocative, interesting, unfolding that satisfies all of the things that you've been asking for. So the contrast of your time-space reality is such a wonderful thing because the contrast inspires, you often say provokes, we say evokes, you say provokes, we say inspires, you say prods. The contrast inspires you to this clear new desire. And sometimes you're in the midst of something that feels so bad and out of it you're shouting, no, I do not want this. But every single time that you are in the place where you are clearly knowing what you do not want, whether you can speak the words in a positive way or not, you are shouting to the universe what you do want. And Source hears every bit of that. But then you got to find a way to as quickly as possible get out of the screaming for what you are wanting mode from the place of not letting it in into an allowing place. Meditation is the ultimate allowing place because you quiet your mind so there is no contradictive thought. Appreciation is a tremendous allowing space because in appreciation you are lined up with that which is your source. As we're moving forward here today, we'll talk about all kinds of different things that you might do to get more into the allowing mode. And we can't think of anything that is more beneficial for you to practice or to hear or revisit because as deliberate creators, you are continually coming to clarity about what your preferences are. But quite often, you are not a vibrational match to the very preferences that you have preferred. So that's why we are calling this gathering the art of allowing because that is really where your emphasis is. Your emphasis is upon bringing yourself vibrationally into compliance with your own desires. As you made the decision to come forth into this creative environment, you knew that there would be a tremendous amount of variety. You never expected everything to be all finished in some state of perfection 
because you understood when you made the decision to come forth and from your broader non-physical perspective, you understand that there is no ending to anything. You understand that there is only expansion, that this is a universe that never ceases to expand. And so as you came forth into this environment, you knew that the variety would be tremendous and you knew that from that variety, you could choose those things, line up with them, and then they would be your experience. And you never once said, I'll wait until that mess gets cleaned up before I come forth. You never once said, I need everything to be just the way I like it before I come forth, even though that's the way many physical humans behave today. Many of you say, I cannot feel good under these conditions because these conditions keep me from feeling good. And we say, you have forgotten about your point of focus. You have forgotten that you can look anywhere in your time-space reality and whatever you give your attention to activates a vibration within you. That's a really key thing to focus upon. Whatever you are giving your attention to activates the same vibration within you. And when you activate a vibration within you, that becomes your point of attraction. It becomes your point of allowing. So, when you think about the subject of money or dollars, does it feel like fun and adventure to you? Or does it feel like worry and struggle? You can tell right away which way you lean. When you think about your dominant relationship, does it feel life-giving? Does it feel full and expansive? Does it feel good to you? Or does your dominant relationship feel like struggle or bondage? You can tell which way you lean. When a subject comes up, you've got to think about it. And you're going to think about it where you have practiced it most. And by most, we do not mean, if I've thought this thought that didn't feel good for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and now today, I don't have access to any other thoughts because I've thought that most, and I might not have 50 more years to turn it around. It's not like that. It's that somehow, right now, you have to find a way of deactivating that troubling thought by activating another. As you begin to choose thoughts on that subject or off of it that feel good, what begins to happen is, little by little, and we're not talking about a long period of time, you can do it in 30 days on any topic, it is our promise to you. You can change what is dominant within your vibration and therefore change your point of attraction and therefore change the way your life unfolds. There is nothing that is out of bounds. You are the creator of your own experience. You are the only one who can vibrate within you. You are the only one who can think your thoughts. You are the only one that can activate the vibration in this point of attraction. So we know that things have happened or there are people in your life or there are things that you are focused upon that it just feels like when you think about it, you cannot help but feel the way you feel. But we're here to tell you, you can focus around it. You can focus otherwise. You can focus within it. Little by little, you can take the most troubling experience experience or relationship and change it to something that feels better or you can learn to ignore it and focus upon the things that already feel good and you can change your point of attraction this is the big thing to know about step one and step three let's say you don't have enough money let's say you're really worried about it let's say the bills are piling up let's say you are feeling very very uncomfortable about it let's say that it seeps through many 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 minutes of your day because its tentacles reach into so many different aspects of your life so there you are in this very uncomfortable place on that subject you could pet your cat on a regular basis and while you're petting your cat you're not doing that resistant thing you could meditate for a little while, and while you're meditating, you're not doing that resistant thing. You could sit by the stream or go someplace that feels good. You could have a nice meal. You could appreciate some child's face. You could find a series of things that you decide that you will focus upon, and as you choose those better-feeling things, because nothing is more important than that you feel good, you will give less airtime to the vibration that has been holding you in the place of not enough money. And so when you sit to pay your bills, you may have a traumatic 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 minutes occasionally, but it doesn't need to permeate every moment of every day. And the reason that it does seem to permeate so many moments of so many days is because you still think, in many cases, that you are asking 
from some source that needs to hear your plight before it is willing to give up the goods.